expected this if this is what Coach Trevor and Coach Ducky wanted. Yeah, honestly, I was surprised that the Akai has been picked quite early as well. And now we're looking at the bands here. Well, what do you feel about the Angela's was a fireman's yeah. band for TLBH? Yeah, uh, uh, Moscow, uh, Angela, Angela Lee is very scary, so you don't want to give that for sure. But it seems like uh, the fireman's is uh, uh, a Sanji, uh, sorry, a few special that actually provide provides them a lot of uh, not really sustain, but a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, ways to really dive into the back lines. Imagine the fair mister is done with the Roger. I think uh, you're always going to be going into the back lines with that. So that's probably why they ban it. Um, without the Yuzhong, you usually go for a Paquito now for TLPH. Um, but they, but they go far side. So. Okay, so it's yeah. pretty standard. I mean, like keeping the Edith still of flags can go to Rome, can go to the EXP. Right. For now, Falcons, AP Brand, they're missing their mid. Potentially missing their, their, their roamer as well. Yeah, I think the Farsa pick is great here. You know, they've already banned out the Fairmans, the Angela, yeah. so two mid laners away from few. And we did say earlier as well, before the draft even started, that you yeah. want to try to maximize the potential you have in the mid lane yeah. on Sanji. Force few on a hero that can make a mistake. You yeah. try to capitalize on that here in the draft. Could be. Yeah. And right now, honestly, casters watching this draft live, seeing this Farsa pick, Falcons AP Bread, what do they need to do to respond? Well, I think the Falcons AP Bread, they've got enough ways to actually start taking out the Feathered Airstrike. Maybe a second insurance policy on top of that is going to be great. Like a minute. Oh, yep, there's the Minotaur as well. Hopefully, we do get some Wait, damage. Julian. Mid Julian? Yep, a few special. Oh my goodness, Mid Julian. So now, whoa, seeing this draft. Yep. What else are the answers? I mean, like, this Julian is a surprise. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, there's Makito. We expect it. I think um, for FCAP, they want to dive. For TLPH, they just want to go for Protect 1 around this Moskov. Thank you very much to both our analysts, Mirko, as well as Wolf. You guys have done an amazing job. And with that being said, we're throwing over to our casters for the first game of the semifinals. Casters, take it away. Decisive action is required this game. Similar to LaFell's hair, they must decide whether to stay straight or throw a curl. This is going to be a best of five of a lifetime here. Today, it's going to be me getting Kuhn as well as Leo at the desk to keep you guys company for this match. At your service, we'll be bringing you the starter to what could be a grand finals caliber matchup. I think everyone in the Amazon arena is expecting that much. Everyone watching around the world. And talking about decisive of action. I like how neither team had to take their time with the draft. I think they all knew what was coming even before the opponent got the pick. They were blitzing through it, right? That's what we want to see here. And similar as we get into the land of Dawn, players are loaded up. It's going to be Falcons AP Bren on the blue side up against Liquid Echo on red. It's been a while since we've seen few on this Julian. Uh, a lot of the Julians in MSC from uh, the group stage to the knockouts now have been in the jungle and they've been good. And now I want to see how a uh, melee ranged uh, mid might work because look, they sent him home early. Yep, I think, you know, a lot of it comes with a bit of sacrifice. Yes, you have some good CC, you're a big toolbox as a mid laner, but more importantly, in the earlier stages, you're not going to have a lot of control over that mid lane. Yep. And that's trouble for Kyle TZ and Ogwen. Look at that. Kyle TZ struggling to get the farm up, going quickly, going from the purple down to that small camp all the way, while Again, Ogwen sent home too. I think they're just taking shifts. Yep, I mean, that's the beauty of it all, right? I mean, if you dies here, then it's going to be a lot of trouble for the rest of the team. I'm expecting Liquid to try and play around that priority. So that's why we see that the side laners from FCAP being very, very aggressive whenever Kyle is nearby. Yep, Kyle here just uh, taking that crab, checking if uh, Benny Cutie is free for the taken. JP watching out for the flank. All right, that's the gold lane situation. I think uh, Marco's doing well. Up top, how about that? Flap versus Sanji. Uh, mm. Sanford, rather. Yeah, this is going to be a little interesting, right? Because Sanford, especially when you're Paquito into Terizla, generally Terizla can control this lane, clear much faster than you in the earlier stages of the game. And then once you start rolling around mid, it's a bit of a toss-up, right? It's all off of that very first turtle. Who's walking away with more gold at the end of it? Uh-huh. Now it's spawning in uh, just a few seconds. Kyle Tizi can make his way there. That is Carl Tizi as well, making a beeline, rushing his way with Sanji right next to him. And I think Few is trying to get to level four. Not that he needs it, but I think that just the scaling of his skills will help. Oh, absolutely, right? I mean, he needs to make sure that Flap Tizi is also like in control of this lane. More oh. importantly, at least they do this deny this. Kyle is attempting Grand Theft Purple. He does get it, trading out for the turtle. Carl Tizi secures. Ogwin at less than half health. 
That's a non-starter. Neither team drawing first blood just yet. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking whether Carl actually wants to go for the invade, but it looks like they're not going to do it. That's going to be one potential camp that they could fight later down the line. But at the same time, right, both Ogwin and as well as Few making sure that they're sticking together because, again, not a lot of wave clear in the mid lane, allowing TLPH to make that first rotation. And a lot of those rotations are ending up in bottom. Whether you like it or not, there's a brewing fight there. Uh, there has been for the past couple of minutes. It's just neither team are looking engaged. JP taking the long bush. I think Ogwin is all the more aware. Oh, neither want to pull the trigger first. Oh, here we go. Carl TZ inside. F caps jungle. Kyle goes ahead, pulls the retry, and he's swinging away. They both let go. Oh, here comes Flap TZ. Jumping in with the penalty zone. Tempest of Blades up. Kyle TZ, heavy spin, trying to survive. Kyle TZ at a third of his health as well. Ooh. Kyle TZ barely standing. Either of them are kids, draw first blood. It's unfortunate. Sanford, JP, and Sanji were trying to figure out where exactly he's going to exit through the jungle. And that's the meaning of having priority. I mean, great job on Kyle TZ winning out on that red tree, allowing him to extend the timer for how long that purple buff is going to stick on him. Liquid Echo have to play a little slower because Kyle, he's a menace. Look at him. JP, I'm missing the combo. As Kyle Deasy just dancing on through, looking to take this little wanderer, ends up spending retribution. Few very low. Sanji with the feather strike. JP popping the primordial wrath. No one home. Liquid Echo struggling to find any conversions here. Four minutes in. Mm -hmm. And even for Super Marco, he's honestly doing a really good job trading against many QT down in this lane. We'll double check on how much gold has been distributed because we did see a couple of river crabs going over to Benny's side. Now, Seven seconds left, right? Next turtle is going to start spawning. I think Liquid Echo really need to think about how exactly they're going to attack the map. They can't just focus on Kyle. And yes, you want to be able to relieve pressure from Benny QT, but sacrifices need to be made. All right. Uh, luckily, it was Liquid Echo who secured the first turtle. Mm -hmm. So they have that economic advantage, and that's what keeps this gold lead relatively close. Falcons AP Brand barely about 600, 800 ahead. Sanford catches a face full of a Fuse combo, and Flap TZ Nogwin pulling turtle over their side. 1v1 between Few and Sanford, putting Sanford about a third of his health. Oh, wow. Flap TZ acting as the enforcer, keeping Carl TZ at bay. They're going to be rotating around here. Oh, even Feather Airstrike commitment? That's a huge skill. Spanned by Sanji. Oh. We know when Fury forces Sanji to flicker back out. Kyle Deasy secures the turtle. Coming in. Jumping through the walls. Kyle takes it out on Ogwin. That's one down for Falcons. AP Bren. Now Sanford looking to knock out the Filipino cannon. In comes JP. The flicker out from Flap. Few still dueling with JP. In comes the kill. That's two down for Falcons. AP Bren. JP still off. Ah, oh, Kyle Deasy takes him out. Few takes out Sanford. Huge trades, delayed wins for the Falcons, but Liquid Echo left reeling. Oh boy, what a trade. What an extended fight this is. And it's not over yet. Tempest of Blades, no. They know his flicker was spent. They calculated every moment. These battle spells are such a big indicator of who they want to punish, right? You overextend, you want to keep up with them. You want to make sure that they're always creeping on their leads. Let's look at this replay one more time, right? Because after the Minoan Fury, this is starting to look like an awkward situation. Sanford's realizing, hold on, we got to wait for a few to start throwing out those abilities. Once this Julian doesn't have anything left, that's when we go in. Falcons AP Burnley really the mo made the most of the few bodies they had. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, Liquid Echo, for the most part of that short, maybe 30, 40 second engagement, had the numbers advantage. That they did, they did, but let's let's pull it back for a second because now that we're looking at the goal, we can see the real economic difference. Hold up, wow, okay. Trying to dive Super Marco like that. Hey, the bulletproof vest still on. Yep, has yet to die, but also has yet to take any kills. For the past six and a half minutes, Gold Lane has been relatively mum. Now, checking on the items here, that is just 200 between uh, Benny Cutie and Super Marco. Well, considering everything, that's actually not too bad. The biggest lead that we are seeing is between the... Oh, boy. 40. Dodges it. Still alive. Gets a knockout punch. Oh, Kyle no. TZ's down. Sanford gets the KO. Outplaying Kyle TZ. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He was stutter stepping in the wrong direction, thinking that, like, hopefully... I'm, am I still on the wall? Wait. Few catches a couple of volleys from Sanji's feathered airstrike, lets him go. Now the turtle fight. Yep, they're going to have to take their time here. We're still waiting for that knowing fury. Oh, the onward by JP, forced to use a primal wrath. Flap TZ, hammering away, Benny Cutie, hitting that turtle to secure by Liquid Echo. Carl TZ with a heavy spin. It's great. It's looking so good for now, but they back away. Now, with Carl TZ, he's timing. Oh, 
Oh, Sanford! Oh! Dashing through the iframe, keeping him up. Oh, no! And now Kyle looking for the punish. Tempest up late to the sky. Finally. Kyle Teasy gets one over 40. I'm telling you, this game is just taking your breath away, brother. This is one of those Woo! where every single crumb is going to be fought for. And so far, Kyle Teasy having the biggest lead in the game before we get into our next fight. This tier one should fall, and hopefully TLPH, they back off. They've already expanded so many resources. Multiple wins for Liquid Echo down bottom. Forced the flicker out of Super Marco. Took the tier one anyways. And here's another look at that 1v1. Ah, oh, so beautiful, right? Like Sanford, he's thinking about the many different angles that he, go, he can go through, but the worst part about it is that if you have iframes, it's hard to land the heavy left hand to give you that extra shield. He would have loved the extra movement speed, but without that shield, he just pops. Yep, couldn't have his cake and eat it too. He can only really move out of the way or get the shield and then maybe fight a little bit more to get some backup or maybe even kill uh, the Ling. But now, oh no, view! The iframe out of the dash! Survives that 2v1. Now in comes Kyle Teasy again. How about it? Kyle versus 40. Chapter 3. They're backing out. All right, all right. The trilogy isn't done just yet. Kyle might still go for this, but I think for the most part, Sanji has got him covered. Ooh, looking to burst down that Farsa, but no, Kyle's just going to end up taking tier 1. Yeah, like Kyle is he's so strong right now. He's so far ahead of the game in comparison to Carl TZ, but it's all about decisive action, like I said at the very beginning of the game, right? Despite Liquid Echo, oh, we're losing out on a couple of trades. The gold lead isn't too far. They've gotten two turtles. They're basically trading one for one when it comes down to turns, and even during the items, right? We now are seeing Liquid Echo putting respect on FCAP's name. I'm seeing, at the very least, uh, making sure that they've got Feather already. Oh, wait, sorry, not even Feather. Sorry, Blood Wings coming in from Sanji to keep himself alive. Yep, uh, and going between the low econ heroes, uh, Frederick was right. Uh, he mm -hmm. mentioned that the Terizla, despite being relatively low gains. Oh Ooh. no! JP come in, the flicker combo. Feather strike from Sanji. They cancel through. Down goes Betty Cutie. Marco gets his head. Sanji's down as well. Kaldizi diving into the back line, finding him. 4D looking to flank him as well. Finds no one. Now he's the hunted. Ogwin healing them up. 4D says, let's regroup. This is not a good fight to take. And that leaves Kyle Tizi's purple up for them to save her. What a snap! Mm -hmm. That's what you need to see. Decisive action time and time again. And it looks like Falcons AP Bread, they're also looking at at least looking for a timing on these waves. Before that Lord spots, we need to start taking them out. And looks like Falcons AP Bread looking to blitz it. 40 here at a third of his health. JP in the same situation. Oh wow, three big bodies put up between the Major objective and Falcons AP Bren. Carl Teasy can still get this. The penalty zone coming in. The SOD, no one home. JP taken out. Flap Teasy traded for. That's another one. Super Marco taken out by Kyle Teasy. And there's a big knockup. I mean, no one Fury. Sanford's down. Three for two. But the major objective scored by Falcons AP Bren all this while. Benny was just working up top. Mm -hmm. He's just farming. He's just getting that compound interest when you leave him alone in a lane, man. You can hear the money just drop it on the floor. Next tower falls. That's not too bad. But now the mid-tier one falls for Liquid Echo. And that's where all the problems are going to start beginning, right? Invades are going to be more prominent for Kyle Teasy. Even honestly, with this <laughs> with this considerable lead, 9,000 gold on him alone. But when we look at the damage dealt, you can see that Sanji, again, with less items, less econ, less gold, is still having some relevant numbers. Which is the allegory of this whole situation. Liquid Echo, the more aggressive team. Mm -hmm. If you try to take out Sanji, you still have Benny Cutie and Sanford to deal with. That's not a clear go at a team fight because there's so many damage sources for Liquid Echo. So with that said, Falcons and Brent are playing the map. A huge push up top, in mid, down bottom. Carl, uh, Kyle Teasy did leave that there. Now Carl Teasy. He has a big question to answer, like, who do I hit with a heavy spin? He's, yeah. he's only been using it to disperse, really. Pretty much. I think he's been also just holding it for as long as possible during these turtle fights as well. I mean, I mean even the Lord fight, he basically wasn't even there, so I can't even say just yet. But now, with the Guardian's helmet, that's going to keep him alive a little bit longer. However, Falcon's AP Brent, at this point of time, right, after the Lord push, really good punish, right? You found two kills, you got the Lord, but now you've gotten every single outer turret. You can see now there, there's a much clearer lead for Falcon's AP brand. 5,000 gold now looking to extend it to at least six or seven if they don't lose the next fight. Yep, the biggest so far in this 12-minute bout. Now the purple in jeopardy for Liquid Echo. Are they going to try to save this for them? Ogwin coming in. 
through the line of fire, does survive with the motivation roar, and Falcon Zebra Brand just gonna be happy with playing footsies. Mm -hmm. I think at this point in time, that motivation roar, especially, oh yeah, he's already got the flash as well as the favor. He's gonna be topping up his teammates really, really easily, allowing Falcon Zebra Brand to continuously go back to the fight. And himself too, he has the Oracle. Mm -hmm. So he can take maybe a few hits, maybe a few volleys from Sanji's Feathered Airstrike, and still be there for that delayed Minoan Fury. I think that's been a key in their success so far by pulling the trigger very, very late. Oh, well, speaking of pulling the trigger here, oh. that's going to be a penalty zone gone. Uh-huh. No one home hits the buff barely. I wonder what Flapteezy was thinking. Mm, I think Flapteezy was like, if I happen to clip him, we go. If nothing, we just back away. There's a lot of disengage mechanics. Yeah, which makes sense. If that was an all-in, he would have done the animation cancel flicker because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's still up. So maybe he was just baiting something out from Liquid Echo. The cavalry did not bite. I mean, they, they gotta tickle up somehow, right? Especially when you're going for these coin flips. This is a relatively safe coin flip. Just a little from, bit. Yeah, just, just a little, little bit. bit, right? Just to get a little bit of a <laughs> and get a reaction out of them. But still, stone cold from the side of Liquid Echo. If there's any momentum that they have to generate, it's first figuring, figuring out a way to lock Kyle TZ down and then bait Super Marco in. All of this on condition though. Ogwin and Flat TZ have just been absolute brick walls. Lord Dance already upon us. Carl TZ and JP showing themselves. The rest of Liquid Echo making themselves scarce. Ogwin spots a couple more. Carl TZ working on his purple. And JP holding his ground here at the Y brush. Oh, let's, they're going to take their time with this again. This is the calm before the storm. The waves are pushing in. It's not in the favor of Liquid Echo. They've got to do their housekeeping while Falcons continue to somewhat play this dance. They don't want to overextend here walking into that wide brush, but now that they know where Call TZ is, that's a lot of relief. That's right. I wonder if they know where Sanji is too and Benny Cutie. Sanford just barely making his way to the fight. Ogun catches a few hits. The Sanji oh, already spent up. Tempest the Blades up. Down goes the far stuff. We know we're into the back line. Benny Cutie spearing away for his life. Kyle TZ going to be kiting through. Few catches Sanford. Puts him down to less than half health. Same situation for JP. JP coming in. Earth Shatter and onward. No one home. They let go of the Concealed by JP. Going to try to relocate. Caught by oh. few. Flickering back. Ho ho, caught in, and there's a jump by Marco, gets caught into the wall, they need to kite through, in comes the penalty zone! He's hit hard, and now they're jumping forward, Super Marco on Sanford! <laughs> oh, he finds one, and another! Two free kills for Falcons AP, Brett Kyle TZ in trouble, not before he takes out Kyle TZ! TZ's on the ground, JP and Sanji, the only ones left, they're gonna crack right through, the inhibitor of the base is exposed! 15 minutes into this game, and the crystal is under threat! Oh, Sanji, gonna throw them out. Can he? There's a wave, the Minoan Fury spent in. They gotta respect the firepower. There's no wave in mid. I mean, 13 seconds on Benny Cutie and Sanford. Can he hold? All He's right. gonna try, penalty zones out. They force it through. They're gonna force it through the brute force damage of Falcon's AP Bren. Draw first blood in this best of five. What a game here to kick things off between these two Filipino giants here. Well done. GG, well played. That's game one point and one point for Falcon's AP Bren. This is Falcon's AP Bren's first victory over Liquid Echo in months. <laughs> They couldn't do it in Manila, but here they did it in Riyadh. Uh, I mean, it's got to feel good for now. And this is just a start. It, this is just a start, but it goes to show a lot of their movements from TLPH are kind of telegraphed. And Falcon's AP Brand, they're taking, they're taking the metagame one step up. They're getting in their heads. I'm glad.